Are you fighting over the custody of your little sister while being broke, unemployed and hunted by animatronics? Don't worry, I got you. In this video, I will be going over the events that unfold in Five Nights at Freddy's. The goal is to identify the mistakes made by the characters and how to overcome them. In-depth analysis will be carried out so that we can make better decisions than the ones made in order to stay alive and beat the crippling unemployment, I mean animatronics. The movie begins with a security guard working a night shift at the renowned Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. We find out that he's being chased by something which eventually captures him and restrains him to a torture device with a blender mask closing in on his face. The mask, however, moves towards his face at a whopping 0.001mm per second, which should give him enough time to undo those conveniently loose bolts by his hands. Despite this, he doesn't escape in time and his face gets minced. Okay, first of all, he had plenty of time to unscrew those loose bolts, which actually gets proven later on in the movie. Second, if I was the one running this operation, my first priority would be to invest into R&D on increasing the speed that the mask moves. I would also invest in restraints that, you know, can't be unrestrained by the restrained. But hey, what do I know? The movie then cuts to our main protagonist, Mike Schmidt, not to be confused with Mike Afton from the games. Mike lives alone with his younger sister, Abby, who exhibits anti-social behaviour along with drawing pictures all day with her imaginary friends. As for Mike, we find out that he's struggling to cope with day-to-day -day life as a result of his little brother Garrett being kidnapped in front of him when they were little. We see his impulsiveness kick in when he beats the shit out of some dude's dad at the mall because Mike thought he was kidnapping the kid. While he's a little bit confused, he does have the spirit. Don't get me wrong, I am very anti-kidnapping kids, but... In a scenario like this, if Mike was really concerned, he should have followed the man to the car park where he can note down the number plate of the vehicle and then report it to the police on suspicion of kidnapping a minor. Instead, this gets him fired from his job and he's now unemployed like me. If things couldn't get worse for Mike, his Aunt Jane threatens to take him to court over the custody of Abby because she wants those sweet, sweet monthly custody payments. As a result, Mike has to take a job working as a night guard at, wouldn't you know it, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. He's given a very brief overview of the place which includes the fact that it's been abandoned for over two decades. Okay, ask yourself, why would someone keep an abandoned building up for this long and why would they hire a security guard? If they cared so much about it, they would do something like renovate it, sell it or even knock it down. This doesn't add up and would give me more than enough reason to go FBI mode on finding out everything I can about this place. Also, Mike is told that the electricity here is iffy. This is where I would bring the SR32 120,000 lumens LED expert approved flashlight with me. Also, even without prior knowledge that there were killer animatronics, we are told that this place is regularly broken into by drunks and other vagabonds. I would also strap up with weapons abiding by whatever state laws I'm in and at the minimum carry a taser. What he does next is great thinking, scouting the area and knowing the layout is vital to gain the upper hand in case any unwanted guests come wandering in. Other than this, Mike doesn't do any research on the place and on his first night he has a usual recurring dream about Garrett being kidnapped. This time however, he also dreams about five little kids. See, if he had done his research, he would realise how strange this was and I'm not talking about strange in the fact that he's dreaming about five little kids. Anyway, the next day Aunt Jane hires two goons, one of which is Abby's babysitter, Max. They're hired to wreck the pizzeria while Mike is on his shift so that it looks bad for him on his upcoming court case. Later on, Mike begins his second night shift and falls asleep again in order to enter the dream. This time, he chases the little kids to confront them and asks them about the kidnapping of his brother. One of the kids then attacks him in his dream which causes him to wake up. He then checks the camera feed and sees a police officer outside who introduces herself as Vanessa. She helps patch up his wounds which somehow traverse from his dream to reality. After, she reveals that the reason this place was shut down was because five kids disappeared here and their bodies were never found. Mike, listen here mate, you just dreamt of five kids and now you're just being told that five kids got kidnapped here. Get the f*** out of there, hand in your letter of resignation, take out a loan and hire Harvey Specter for your upcoming court case. Anyway, remember these goons from earlier that were hired by Aunt Jane. They pull up to the pizzeria in the morning just after Mike has left and break into the place. <gasps> Yeah, that dude had no chance. Back on the camera feed, one of the goons sees his accomplice running from something while screaming and decides to check it out. 
Now, let's do a poll. I want to see a show of hands. What do you do when you see a grown man scream and his bloody handprint silhouette slide down the door? Do you A, run to the nearest exit, get in your car and drive away to a safe location where you can call the local authorities, or B, stand there? That's right, B, stand there. Anyway, he dies. Back at the car, Max decides to check on her accomplices as they're taking a bit longer than usual. Now, call me a bitch all you want, but I don't care how old I am, I am never putting my face or head near any big ass animatronic mouth. She's much braver than me though, and attempts to recreate the bite of 83, only to get viciously decapitated in half. Since Max isn't quite whole enough to be babysitting anymore, Mike brings Abby along with him to his third night on the job. What's the worst that can happen? Now, it's mentioned in the books that the pizzeria is located in Utah. Whether this is canon or not, however, only three states have a legal limit for where kids can be left alone. Illinois, Maryland and Oregon. It would 100% be better to leave Abby at home compared to taking her to a security night shift where reported breaking has just occurred. We should also instruct her to call the police immediately if anything comes up. There is no way he brought his little sister to a night shift and fell asleep with his headphones on. Man, only Saul can save him in this court case now. Anyway, Mike wakes up to Abby's cries of terror and to his surprise, she's getting jumped by the animatronics. Psych! They're somehow best buddies with her now. It seems they're not hostile for now with the presence of Abby, but you bet your ass the next shift I'm coming loaded with a flamethrower, buckets of water and a Mark 1 Iron Man suit. Anyway, on the fourth night, Vanessa admits that she knew that animatronics come to life and better yet, why they come to life. How the f*** does a police officer know about the ghost children that are possessing these animatronics? F*** this, Mike, pack your things and leave this town. Unfortunately, he can't, but that's fine though. The animatronics are being friendly with Abby and even want to build a fort with her. Vanessa, being the sensible law enforcer, will help make sure they're safe and lay out ground rules, right? Right. These things are big and they could be dangerous, so I think we need to lay some ground rules, all right? Vanessa, what do you think? I think we could use the tables for the fort. Anyway, after a fort building montage with hella copyright music, Vanessa and Mike get some alone time and she finds out that he's trying to identify Garrett's kidnapper through the dreams. As this is going on, Abby accidentally injures herself from Bonnie's guitar and as a result, Vanessa warns Mike not to bring her again. The fifth night approaches and Mike has no other choice but to get Aunt Jane to babysit Abby. Back at the pizzeria, Mike has another dream but this time he's offered a trade deal. He's offered the opportunity to stay with Garrett in the dream forever in exchange for Abby, Victor Wambanyama and two first round picks. Mike accepts the trade deal and instantly regrets it but that doesn't matter because the trade gets vetoed and the animatronics stick him in the same contraption we saw at the start of the film. We then find out that Freddy and his crew didn't invest into any R&D like I suggested. The blender still moves at a whopping 0.001mm per hour and the restraints can still be, um, unrestrained. Back at home, Golden Freddy pays Abby a visit and unalives the aunt in the process. He then offers to take her back to the pizzeria to which she agrees, however, there's a slight problem. You see, they're quite far away from the pizzeria, how on earth are they going to get there? Taxi? Back at the pizzeria, Mike manages to escape the restraints but gets badly injured by Foxy. Vanessa manages to find him and brings him back to hers to treat his wounds, which luckily, the plot armour has dampened the impact of the damage. She then reveals a big, unexpected, bone-chilling twist. She is the daughter of William Afton, the person who kidnapped and murdered those five kids including Garrett. She then explains that their bodies and souls are inside the animatronics and being controlled by William. She also helps him prepare for the final boss fight by giving him a taser gun and a taser stick. However, she can't come with him because she has to prepare for a dramatic entrance at the end after having a change of heart in order to save the main characters just when they're about to die. Also, her advice for Mike is that the tasers will incapacitate the animatronics long enough to buy him some time. Buy him some time! Buy him! Some time. I'm sorry, but if I taser one and it's prone on the floor, I'm going Kratos mode on it and ripping its head off and pulling its circuitry out with my bare hands. I'm tearing its insides out, curb stomping it and whipping it with its own limbs. Anyway, Mike races off to go rescue Abby at the pizzeria and manages to save her in time by tasering Chica. Great, now tear it limb from limb. Mike, now's not the time for a soliloquy. 
pick Abby up like a duffel bag and run to the car. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. This cupcake brother, why is he looking at me like that? He can hold that as well. I'm pulling that candle out and shanking him multiple times before stomping on it several more times. This doesn't happen though and Cupcake jumps them from behind and manages to get a firm gorilla grip on Mike's Achilles which causes Abby to run away alone. She gets chased by Foxy and it grabs her from the ball pit but, wouldn't you guess it, Vanessa comes and saves her after having a change of heart. Yellow Rabbit then appears and talks hella trash to Mike saying he killed his brother and now he's gonna kill him before booting Mike in the face unconscious. Wake up children! I have something for you to play with! Wake up children, I have something for you to play with. Is this one possessed by Bill Cosby or something? Anyway, Vanessa confronts Yellow Rabbit before he can stab up Mike and it's revealed that William Afton is the one donning the Yellow Rabbit suit. The father-daughter reunion takes a turn for the worse when William stabs Vanessa. Abby, thinking quick on her feet, realises that the animatronics are commanded through drawings. She sketches up a picture displaying William as the kidnapper and murderer which then turns the animatronics against him. Cupcake then leaps at William's abdomen which activates the interior spring traps and impales him before killing him. If it were me, I would then proceed to look into every property owned or rented under his name to see if there's a data center or any active servers. This is because from the games we know he can upload his consciousness or some shit like that so I'll make sure to burn down any possibility. Anyway, the film ends with Vanessa at the hospital on 1 HP and Mike having full custody of Abby. We are also shown that she has significantly improved her social life and that the two are much happier now. With that being said, the information and insight into what we were up against were all provided by Vanessa, we just had to further inquire a lot earlier. With a little prep and a little more critical thinking, I believe that the animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's were beaten. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments how you would beat these animatronics. And remember, get a job.